Hi everyone, my name is Brent Weinberg from LearnerRadiology.com. I'm here to tell you about today's final 20th Brain Tumor Board Review case. This is going to be the last one in this series. Congratulations to all you guys who watched all the rest of the videos. Hopefully you're, uh, you're ready for brain tumors on your exam. Today's case is a 56-year-old man who's got HIV and right arm weakness. Hopefully these images are going to give us a little idea about why he's got arm weakness. Got a couple images from a CT of the head, non-contrast. Got an axial and coronal image here. Hopefully by now you're finding the abnormalities pretty easily. Now we've got some images from a MR, same patient, diffusion, flare, T2. Kind of try to characterize that lesion, kind of what's going on. Here we have pre and post contrast through this region. Here's your pre contrast, here's your post contrast. Looks like it's enhancing to me. So now I'm being a little nice here. Got to think about what are your top three differential considerations here. Remember this patient had HIV, that can be a nice clue for you. Number two, which of the following entities has uptake on thallium chloride spec? So here you have some lesions that might be in the differential for this case. So this is lymphoma, cysticercosis, toxoplasmosis, antimyelinating disease. So this is your differential when you see a solitary enhancing parenchymal mass. I try to divide these up a little bit as to whether you're looking at an immunocompetent patient or an HIV or immunocompromised patient. In a patient with a normal immune system, you're probably thinking about metastatic disease, high-grade glioma, or lymphoma. If you're looking at an immunocompromised patient, the, the considerations are similar, but maybe in a little bit of a different order. Lymphoma is much more prevalent in immunocompromised patients, as is infection. So those kind of move to the top of your list. Metastatic disease and uh, glioma are still differential considerations. Now, this was a case of primary CNS lymphoma. This is a relatively rare disease, but it is uh, associated with HIV and has a higher incidence in patients with HIV. The incidence has been decreasing with better antiretroviral therapies. Now, CNS lymphoma is a collection of abnormal B lymphocytes in the uh, parenchyma of the brain. Uh, they can often be detected in the CSF, so uh, lumbar puncture and analysis of uh, CSF can help you figure out what the differential is. Now, the most common locations for CNS lymphoma is in the basal ganglia, periventricular white matter, and corpus callosum. Now, here, uh, when you see CNS lymphoma, the key characteristics are you'll often have multiple enhancing lesions. In this case, there was really just one. They will often be T2 hypo-intense. You'll have reduced diffusion. Now, in immunocompetent patients, the enhancement tends to be pretty solid and homogeneous, but in immunocompromised patients, it will be more cystic necrotic, as it was in this case. Now, in this case, your key is to try to differentiate it from infection, and uh, you can either do a thallium scan. A thallium is taken up by lymphoma, but not toxoplasmosis and other infections. Uh, but then often, like what they'll do is they'll do a treatment trial for toxoplasmosis. So they'll give antitoxo medications. And if it gets better in a relatively short period of time, then it's probably toxoplasmosis. So those are the two ways you might differentiate uh, these diseases. Now here we have the CT through there. You see this hyperdense mass in the left basal ganglia. That's also another nice characteristic that should help you think about lymphoma. You've got a bunch of surrounding edema in the basal ganglia kind of extending into both the temporal lobes and the adjacent frontal lobes. Here we see on the MR, it's a little bit dark on, uh, on diffusion here. Not sure why that is, like maybe there's a little, uh, maybe there's a little blood products there. Pretty dark on, uh, on T2 and flare, or flare and T2 here, but uh, you've got a ton of edema surrounding this, uh, this lesion of the basal ganglia here. Now on your pre-contrast and your post-contrast, you see a peripherally enhancing lesion, maybe a little bit of central necrosis. That's more characteristic of lymphoma in an immunocompromised patient. Again, though, your differential does include metastatic disease, um, infection, and uh, glioblastoma particularly. So you got to keep those things in, uh, in consideration. Now, as we talked about already, lymphoma takes up thallium on a thallium scan. So that can help you differentiate lymphoma from infections. Uh, so that's sometimes used, or you might think about a treatment trial. 
that's the end of this case. Uh, so we're going to go on to a summary here of kind of all the things you've seen uh, in the cases as you went along. Uh, hopefully you've seen a lot of these different tumors. Hopefully you, you can kind of come up with a pretty useful differential. Many times you're going to have one like kind of in the top, but uh, hopefully in a multiple choice situation, they'll only include like one when there's overlap, like between a DNAD and ganglioglioma. In these kinds of testing scenarios, you do need to be roughly aware of kind of what the treatment options are. Is it resection? Is it radiation? Is it chemotherapy? It, you be kind of roughly aware of it. Be aware of some of the things that give you a better or worse prognosis uh, and some of the genetic things. They can kind of ask about those, but those are kind of second order questions. If you're getting the diagnosis, you're probably getting most of the points and you're probably doing okay. You can get some extra points uh, if you know some of those more advanced things. I'm going to recap now two slides and hopefully I'll get you one or two questions, kind of put you over the top. Uh, the first is about our cerebellar pontine angle masses and the general approach. Think about whether it's solid or cystic. If it's solid and expands the IEC, think about schwannoma. If it's solidly enhancing but kind of centered outside the IEC, maybe it creeps into the IEC a little bit but not centered there, think about meningioma. Your cystic CP angle masses. If it follows CSF on all the sequences, that's an arachnoid cyst. If it's only mostly similar to CSF, but maybe doesn't completely suppress on flare, but then the key is bright on DWI, so reduced diffusion, that's an epidermoid. The second diagram I wanna focus on for you is the one about cortical temporal tumors. If you see a cortical temporal tumor, think about, is it ill-defined? Like how defined is it? If it's kind of ill-defined, larger, more expansile, you're probably looking at a low-grade glioma. If you don't have, if it's sort of uh, more well-defined and uh, then try to decide whether there's enhancement there. If there's none, it's kind of cystic and bubbly, call it a DNET. If you have a little bit of minimal nodular enhancement, like this case, a little nodule there, call it a ganglioglioma. If you have kind of more heterogeneous enhancement, maybe you have a dural tail, maybe it's an uglier looking lesion than you think, call it a PXA or pleomorphic xanthroastrocytoma. I want to thank you guys all for tuning in for this uh, series. You be sure to check out the channel uh, at uh, on YouTube. Uh, you can definitely see a lot of the videos there. If uh, you follow me on Twitter, we release a lot of these cases on Twitter. We have a lot of fun discussions there. So be sure to check those out. All of these cases and more are available on learnerradiology.com. has some nice features there where you can search the channel. Uh, kind of find the cases a little bit more easily, some playlists uh, where you can kind of figure out what to do, some great advice about taking these different exams, some links to some books and stuff that I recommend as well. Uh, so be sure to check out all of these things. If you haven't seen the other videos, be sure to go back and check them out. I think you uh, will all enjoy them. And uh, if you have comments or anything, drop them uh, in the comments below uh, or uh, be sure to uh, like the video and subscribe uh, to the channel so you can see more of our great content. Thanks a lot to everyone for tuning in today.